What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another sports betting video. And my God, man, what a uh, what an odd weekend of of sports ball we had. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So in this video, we're just gonna go over the recap of Week Seven. Also, I know this is coming out a little late. Normally, I do these on um, uh, Tuesdays. Um, but I just haven't been able to, I just was late yesterday, uh, working and just wasn't able to get one, uh, actually get one done. And, um, yeah, ah, that's, what, that's what happens when you have a full-time job on top of this, man. Sometimes you just can't, you can't get it in. So, um, but yeah, it was a very bizarre week. So we're going to go ahead and cover the, uh, go over the, um, the weekend's games. So we're going to go ahead and take a little look at the Thursday night football game, take a look at some injuries for that game, and of course some betting lines. Um, I'll prob I'm just going to do the um, this Sunday's games on Friday, um, along with like official picks that I'm going to be tailing. And um, yeah, um, and also we're going to take a look at an interesting video from a uh, YouTube channel that... Um, I, I guess a lot of people were talking about. I'm not that active on social media, uh, especially when it comes to. Um, well, I'm just not that active. I mean, I'm on, you know, I have my own private Instagram account. And that's about it. But apparently, uh, I wasn't the only one who noticed some um, some calls that weren't getting uh, that weren't being called by the refs um, in a multitude of games. I mean, I eventually heard about the uh, fiasco for the Browns Colts. But anyway. We'll take a little look at that, um, uh, but first and foremost, we'll talk about this past week. So yeah, we already talked about the Jaguar Saints, very, uh, <laughs> very uh, un, un uh, very uh, surprising um, outcome there. I did not expect it to be uh, that high scoring, but you know it was entertaining to say the least. Not great betting wise if you were uh, following the public on that. Um, but as for the Falcons Buccaneers, man, what a what a I don't even know what to call that I did watch I did watch that game to the end and uh, I was very like I just <laughs> I really didn't know what to make of that game that game was a mess uh, all over the place and it just seemed like both teams were just trying their hardest to give the other team a chance to win but uh, the Buccaneer, the Falcons held on in the end Despite not having Bijan Robinson pretty much the entire game because he wasn't feeling well from what the coaches said, um, and the Falcons' defense pretty much held. Uh, I mean, um, with the exception of a bomb to Mike Evans, which was nasty, um, they pretty much held the Buccaneers in check offensively um, the entire day, and uh, that was pretty surprising. So. Good, good for them. Um, wasn't anything spectacular on the Falcons' side besides just defensively limiting them to one touchdown, uh, the Mike Evans touchdown. Um, and, yeah, those of you who took that plus three and a half of the Falcons, really feeling good about that one. Uh, Bears Raiders, uh, how about that backup rookie quarterback for the Bears, man? Just taking it to the Raiders. Brian Hoyer looking all kinds of bad in that game, even with Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers and Josh Jacobs and and in that defense, I mean, they just could not stop. They just could not get enough stops uh, uh, to, well, even when they got stops, they could not, the, Ra the Raiders just could not get anything going for the majority of that game. Um, I, I remember when I turned the game off, um, it was... I think it, I think the Raiders still only had six points, and it was very late in the game. I was like, man, this is miserable. Um, but yeah, congrats to Bajent, Bajent, however you say his last name. Played a great game. You know, I think his family was there. You know, it's always good to see a, a rookie come out like that with his family there. They weren't, you know, not really expecting to be thrown into the spotlight like that, and just ends up taking his team and leading them to thirty points, and you know, getting the win in front of the home crowd. Always a feel good story for that. Uh, not so good if you're a Raiders fan, man. <laughs> you're starting to see more and more this this Raiders team definitely needs Jimmy Garoppolo to to have that offense functioning. Um, moving on to the Browns Colts, probably 
one of two of the most controversial games of this week. Uh, Browns 39, Colts 38, a very high-scoring game. Um, I don't think anybody really expected that with two backup quarterbacks. Well, with Deshaun Watson, I mean, he basically it basically was two backup quarterbacks because Watson was only in for like a couple series before being taken out for a questionable injury. Uh, and then Gardner Minshew playing very well, uh, well, pretty well. Really, it was the Browns' defense making life miserable um, for Minshew. But still, right at the end, the Browns getting that late touchdown to win the game. And, um, yeah, that was that was very bad. There was two very, very, very questionable calls uh, by the that went against the Colts that had everybody just fuming. Even Jim Irsay, the... Uh, I think that's I think that's who the owner is for the Colts came out and just fired off at the officials saying that you know we need especially in the last two minutes of the game we need mandatory reviews for all penalties that are potentially game dis- game altering uh, decisions because and and I think that make I mean they make a point because at this point right now man it's like the replays come so fast you can get them so fast. Everybody on the couch at home sees that it was a bad call, yet we're just supposed to just just deal with what the refs say, you know? Um, and you have guys in New York watching as well, and you even, like, I mean, we've seen it multiple times where Pereira comes in from New York and says, yeah, that wasn't that, that wasn't that, and even in the Monday, or the Sunday night game said the same thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I agree with Ursay that there should be not challenges because they tried that last year, and no matter how many times uh, uh, coaches threw the flag on a questionable call, it never went their way. I mean, and I think that's stupid. I think it just should be a manual review with some input from New York. I mean, and these guys, because of technology, you get that so fast. There's no reason not to, especially when it's like a game-altering decision, you know. Um, and when it's blatantly obvious that there was no interference or holding or contact or whatever. <sighs> um, moving on to the Giants Commanders. Yeah, that what I thought was going to be my lock of the week for the Commanders. Man, they came out and they just showed their ass. <laughs> it just looked awful. They looked awful against the Giants. Still, the defense played good enough to keep them to just 14 points. But for just for some reason... The commanders just could not get an could not get the ball going, man. They just could not get that offense going. Um, it was a miserable game pretty much the entire time. It went all the way down to the end, you know. And um, you know, it was basically two teams trying to lose. And <laughs> no matter how hard they tried, they someone had to win. Um, yeah, I did not. I didn't watch that game at all. I saw like it was fourteen seven for pretty much the entire game, and I said, "Wow, this is that's a boring game." <laughs> um, moving on to probably uh, my second most hated game of the week uh, as far as the outcome: Ravens thirty eight, Lions six. Uh, I'm going to have a big discussion about this Lions team on Friday. Um, I'm not going to get into it now, but I'm just going to say that. Uh, that is probably it's probably one of the few bets that I've ever placed where I was just absolutely furious with the team that I bet on because of how absolutely god awful they looked and I mean just just piss poor like the Owen 16 Lions bad that's how bad they looked um yeah and they did not score I don't think until the fourth quarter so not even close to what that spread uh, was um, I think it was a three. It was a three-point spread. Uh, I think it was Lions as the uh, underdogs, and not even close. Not even close. So that that, that game was over by halftime, basically. Um, yeah, I was I was so I was so mad. <laughs> uh, the surprise of the week, in my opinion, uh, the Patriots. Last second, beating the Bills. And that's going to lead into my uh, preview for tomorrow night. Um, Bills did not look that impressive. Uh, um, I didn't. I only caught the highlights. Um, it, Patriots pretty much had them until, you know, late in the game when the Bills finally started getting some drives together. But then the Patriots, Mac Jones, man, just when everybody thought he was a – they were labeling him a bust. They're saying he's probably going to be benched. He may be traded. He may not last. Comes out and just has – 
you know, just a great game against what's supposed to be one of the best teams in the AFC. So, um, hats off, hats off there. Of course, me being an idiot, I took the Bills. Um, <laughs> but but I said it. I'm pretty sure I said it in my video last week, going over the weekend's games, that this is another one of those games that the Bills would lose. Like this is just the Bills. Like this is just the type of game the Bills would end up losing. Kind of like how they almost lost to the Giants. I was saying the same thing. The Giants ended up covering that teaser spread that I had. Um, and I think they may have covered the the main sp- I'm not sure. I forget what that spread was. But the teaser spread definitely covered. Um, but yeah, I was, I, I said it. I said this is just one of those games. One of those Bills games that they just end up losing. And there are teams that you can almost, you can almost, you can almost see it when you see the line and you see the game on the schedule you're like man that's a game that they would drop <laughs> uh moving on to the seahawks definitely uh got that cover 20 to 10 i mean it wasn't a dominant performance by the seahawks um i mean ju- just judging by the score they only won by 10 they covered that uh what was it eight eight and a half point spread uh but barely um you know if the cardinals kicked a field goal uh, they would have there would have been a backdoor loss and cover on the uh on the underdog <clears throat> but um but the seahawks was able to get it jackson smith jigba finally start finally looked like a first round pick uh, i think that's when they drafted him i think they took him in the first round um or was it the second round? I don't know. But finally looked like that that player that we saw in college. Uh, had a good game, four catches. I think it was like 60 yards in his first NFL touchdown. Um, so, yeah, good on the Seahawks. Uh, Rams, Steelers, this game, I mean, another, oh, this was another questionable call right at the end. So obviously clear that he was short, yet they called it a first down. And the Rams couldn't challenge because they were out of timeouts. And it was just, like, it, it, literally, it's just a bad call and when it and nothing is more infuriating like if a team gets beat by just a good play you know fine but if a team gets beat because the refs are just being dumb you know and just and and unwilling to admit that they made a mistake then that's just that's the worst kind of loss it's the worst kind of loss in the world and i am like shocked that the steelers won uh won that game because um and not just because of the final score, but like the the way the game went. I watched the first half of that game, and I was very shocked at how the Steelers were playing and how the Rams were playing. I'm like, man, this is this isn't looking good for the Rams. You know, the Steelers looked pretty damn good. Uh, they looked like uh, old school sis. And this may be one of those Tomlin years, man, where they start out real sluggish. And then as they start getting into those, you know, late October, November, December months, they start turning it on and they just somehow make a push for a wild card spot. They did the same thing with Ben Roethlisberger's last year when they made it to the wild card, got crushed for the for th- the first half by the Browns and then nearly came back and won. Uh, that game was hilarious. I watched that. I watched that whole game. That game was fun to watch. <laughs> um but yeah, this is, could be one of those Mike Tomlin like career saving years. Like the the season starts out very questionable, and then all of a sudden you just start seeing, oh, here's a win there, here's a win there. Hey, they're starting to look pretty good. The offense is moving. If they start running the ball with Najee Harris to where you're expecting them to, the Steelers might be pretty darn hard to stop come the come uh, winter when there's when the when the winds start to really matter. Um, so. Um, I guess good on the Steelers. Yeah, I, I ain't got no hate for the Steelers, man. You know, they're a solid franchise. You know, ever since I've been in high, ever since I started paying attention to football, it's been two coaches for Pittsburgh, um, Cower and Tomlin. <laughs> and I've seen both of those guys win Super Bowls. <laughs> so uh, moving on to the uh, Chiefs and Chargers. Uh, I mean, not really a big surprise here. I, I was picking the chargers plus five and a half and i they just got screwed you know and again man it, it's only a matter of time before they fire that head coach because they have all this talent and they just drop games that they really i mean when i say drop i mean like just completely fall apart in games that they really have a shot at and it just doesn't matter it doesn't matter it doesn't seem to matter who they have on the field I don't know what it is. And all, all, right now, all I can point to is the coach. That's all I can point to is the coaching staff. I mean, they got all this talent. 
and they just can't get it done in these big games. It's just why, what's what's holding them back ultimately. You know, like you see a loss like this, 31 to 17, man. You look at the Chargers, man, this, hey, this ain't no playoff team, you know. Um, <clears throat> then uh, going to the Broncos Packers, man. Talk about two miserable teams, man. <laughs> oh, man. There's not really much to say about this. I mean, I, I caught the highlights. And I just forced myself to watch them because, you know, I was bored at work. And, um, you know, one of the few down moments I had, which is usually Mondays. Mondays are like my, my down or uh, Mondays and, and Tuesdays are like my down days, um, you know, because everybody's still teleworking. <laughs> and we're we're in the office us uh, us IT guys and um, yeah so and when I say IT I mean IT infrastructure I'm not I'm, we're cable guys <laughs> and then the Sunday night game thirty one seventeen Philly uh, again a, a game that I thought was going to be much much closer and and for all honesty should have been um, and that's where I'm going to lead into this uh, well. We'll come back to the video. Then there's the Vikings 49ers again. Like, I'm really starting to question this 49ers team now. Um, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from the Vikings. Kirk Cousins played a pretty good game with uh, the the amount of talent that he had around him. Um, and the defense for them. Like, where, where has that defense been all year? You know? Like, that's all I got to say. Yeah. Um, and of course, 49ers kicker still missing kicks, <laughs> but uh, but for real, um, just a bad game for the 49ers. And yeah, I just really got questions, and it just it irritates me when a team like the Vikings, who is they're just I just like I said in the early part of this year, you know, squandering just incredible years from Kirk Cousins. You know, just to have them wallow in outside of the playoffs. I mean, last year, I mean, they went to the wild card and they played the Giants, but still, like, you know, this, this Vikings team, they they may have an offense, especially once you know Jefferson gets back and if Addison is okay. But that defense ain't no playoff defense, man. You know, no no one's gonna win a championship with that that terrible defense. So, I mean, they showed up on Monday night, but I mean, you know, I wouldn't expect that week in and week out. Going back to that Miami Philly game, though, this leads me to uh, this video from Sports Wars, and um, I'm I'm a fan of Sports Wars. I think they're they play they make some pretty pretty good content uh, when it comes to like you know stuff that's going on in the sports world, drama you know drama and you know stuff like that. But this has to do with that um, Sunday night game and talking about penalties, and a lot of these I saw and I was just baffled um, that. Uh, that this was happening, and I ended, and at one point I just turned the game off because I was like, okay, I already know what's going to happen. Like, I don't need to watch. Like there was a bunch of calls that I saw, but uh, let's just go ahead and just go through some of these um, missed calls here. That posted an entire thread of missed calls or bad calls. This was ended up being roughing the passer for some reason, a little bit questionable. This, what clearly should have been a face mask, was not called. Okay, one thing here or there you can understand but then it just you, the entire night you see little things here and there a missed holding call a holding call that shouldn't have been called but was all of this shit and all of it was in the eagles favor see constant you know missed holds and things like that almost tackling a guy from the offensive lineman what about right here you got a guy that basically you know gets put in a headlock as he's trying to get the ball carrier a lot of shit even the Pat McAfee show on ESPN was calling this bullshit out. Start, start again in the third. Like, Philly's a very, very good football team. Well, especially when the refs are on their side. Yeah. Whoa. I'm not so, yeah. Um, and I saw all of those in live time, and I was like, what the hell is going on? Um, another thing in the very beginning of that, not in the very beginning, but when he started that segment on um, Sports Wars, um, he pointed out that uh, that night the Miami Dolphins were penalized 10 times. Philadelphia did not have a single penalty called against them. And you saw the type of stuff that was going, those, those clips and all of that. And, you know, um, it just, it, it really makes you like, it really, really makes you 
believe that we we deserve better from officials and uh and then honestly i know everybody make the makes jokes and all that stuff but then you start to you start to actually understand where these conspiracy sports conspiracy theorists uh get their ideas from you know because i i mean I, I think it's I think it's pretty obvious that everybody's darling teams right now for the AFC and NFC are Kansas City and Philadelphia. Those are the two. Those are the two. You know, those are the two teachers' pets of the NFL. They're the favorites. Every I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like every year there's 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 like two two teams that are two three teams that are like like you can just tell that they're the special ones. They're the they're, they're the favorites, and. Um, you know, it, that's just my opinion, and you know, I don't, I don't fully buy into the whole. Oh, it's rigged. I mean, scripted. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess again, you start to understand why people think that way when you see stuff like this happen, and you see it happen repeatedly, um, especially in these big games. I mean, if you look at this past weekend. This weekend, the books basically massacred everybody when it came to bet lines. It was a shit show for betting wise, and um, basically they just they just yeah it was just highway robbery all the way around, and um, I, that's I mean that's pretty much all I'm gonna say as far as those penalties are concerned, like the ten to, ten to nothing ten to zero penalty wise. Uh, apparently that's only happened seven other times or it was the seventh time in NFL history that that happened and um, in this day and age to have a team to have it be so one-sided on one team where the referees are very trigger happy with the flags for very for pretty much anything um, it, it really does raise a few questions, um, but I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to dive too much into that, um, but I do recommend Sports Wars. Um, they also have a really good, um, uh, well, um, this this guy here does does a live stream with another guy who um, does sports picks on locals. I think it's called sports pits, sportspicks.locals.com. Um, I've watched a few of their live streams. Great information. Um, so sp Sports Wars, I recommend them. Check them out. I've been watching them for a while. Um, okay, so moving on, we'll take a look at injuries for the upcoming Thursday night game for Buffalo and uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, so as of right now, they have uh, Von Miller listed as questionable uh, with a knee injury. Basically, all of these are going to be labeled as uncertain if they're going to suit up, if they're questionable. Um, but really, the, the biggest one is Von Miller. And um, I think uh, we had, um, I think this is Jordan Phillips. I think that's his, his name. Uh, questionable with a back injury. Uh, Dawson Knox is out indefinitely with a wrist injury. But Dalton Kincaid came back and is, is going to be in the starting lineup. So uh, if you're playing fantasy, I'd say maybe, or player props even, take a look at Dalton Kincaid for some player props. Uh, he's definitely going to see more targets. So... Um, not too much. I mean, really, the only the biggest one is Von Miller. A lot of these other players are just probable, which means they're definitely going to play. Um, at this stage of the season, you're just going to see a lot of guys just questionable every week. Uh, for the Buccaneers, uh, some pretty serious uh, players here. Uh, Godwin has a neck injury, and uh, yeah, this is it remains to be seen if he will suit up against the Bills. And that, that would be a big loss uh, for the for the Buccaneers. Mayfield apparently dealing with a knee injury. Um, he is limited by a knee ailment. Um, again, saying it's up in the air. Uh, Matt Filer, offensive lineman, knee injury, questionable. Vita Vey, questionable with a groin injury, though I think he played he played on th on uh, Sunday. And then uh, Edmund, Chase Edmonds, I mean, doesn't really get that many touches, so the questionable with the knee injury. So those are the injuries. Definitely want to keep an eye on uh, Chris Godwin, Vaughn Miller, and Vita Vey. Um, those are going to be the big ones. All right, going into the spreads, all that stuff, um, it's basically sitting at 8.5 across the board over under 42 and a half um, money line definitely favoring the bills and I definitely understand I definitely understand that um, uh, 
and uh, and I'm going to take the Bills. A lot of people are looking like they're a lot of people are taking and I'm, I don't know, maybe it hasn't reflected here, but I've been hearing a lot of people uh, or seeing a lot of people talking about eight and a half on the Bucks. You know, this team could score all that good stuff and we could take a look at the public public betting and uh, the percent of the bets are definitely going on the Bills here. Eighty three percent, 17 percent for the Buccaneers. You know, I wish I could actually see the rest of this stuff, but it is what it is. But um, I don't, I don't, I think this game is one of those trap games for betters, and and honestly, it could be a trap against me picking the eight and a half. Um, I may, if I were to bet this game, I would actually pay down for the seven points uh, for a touchdown, just this uh, minus seven, um, just to be on the safe side. Um. But, um, I don't see a, I don't see a scenario where the Bills are going to lose this game. Uh, and I know I've said this before about other teams, but this just flat out does would just not make sense at all if they drop this game because <clears throat> I know I mean both teams are coming on a short week, so there's no excuse there. Um, the only thing is that the, you know the Bills have been on the road the past two weeks. You know they went to um, uh, oh wait no no I think they were at, were they at home for the Giants oh man now I can't remember <laughs> um, let's see we'll just come up here yeah uh, yeah but yeah they're at home okay that's what I thought um, <clears throat> yeah and they they traveled to New England had a tough loss there they're gonna be back at home. And um, they're facing a Buccaneers team when it comes to pass defense just isn't that good. Um, and offensively, they have the they have the talent, but I just don't believe in Baker Mayfield. I mean, and I'm gonna go into why in just a minute. I also think that you know this is gonna be a huge huge game for the Bills. This is like a must win game. They can't they can't lose this game because it's just gonna destroy them. Morale wise, the fan base is going to start, you know, panicking. Everybody in the NFL world is going to be questioning the Bills. Uh, you know, are they for real? You know, a lot is riding on this, on this, but the Buccaneers, man, I mean, they're just going to go in and they're just going to play. You know, that's it. You know, they, they, no one really considered them a big playoff team. Maybe one of the favorites to win the South. You know, somebody has to win it and then we'll represent the South in the playoffs because everybody, every division has to go to the playoffs now, you know. So <clears throat> basically, like the same, the equivalent of a part- participation trophy. Um, <clears throat> but the Bills, I honestly think, like Josh Allen has a lot to prove. Sean McDermott has to motivate these guys. I think the defense is going to be pissed off and they're going to play. Uh, they're going to play that way. I think Stephon Diggs is going to be very uh, amped up and pissed. Um, and that's the only thing that I'm going to count against the Bills is the attitude and mindset of Stephon Diggs. We all know. We all know how he left Minnesota. We all know there's stuff he's been spouting since he's been in Buffalo. But is this going to be one of those times where Stephon Diggs keeps his keeps his focus keeps his head on straight and just goes out there and has one of those 12, 13, 14 catch games, two touchdowns, and helps the Bills just pummel the Buccaneers? Or is this going to be one of those games where you're going to be seeing the sidelines, you're going to be seeing him talking to the coaches, seeing him talking to uh, Josh Allen, you know, and <clears throat> is this going to be one of those diva moments? If that happens, then the Bills are in a lot of trouble. If he's able to keep his focus and not overreact – then I think the Bills will definitely win this game by multiple points, by like two touchdowns, um, double digit. I'll just say double digit. Now the reason why I'm not sold on the Buccaneers going into Buffalo and winning this game, or even covering their spread at eight and a half, and I know that eight and a half is a lot of points, but it's not double digits, but it is it is a lot of points. It's up there in the NFL. Um, the reason why is because of Baker Mayfield. Obviously, you had the 2017 win at home against the Vikings. Vikings defense isn't that great, and it was week one. I know it was week one for Baker, first time in a very in a full game with a new team and a bunch of weapons, all that stuff. Then they go and they have a great game against the Bears. Then they go. Then they're at home uh, against. Yeah, they're at home against um, Philly, and they just get crushed. 
It wasn't even a con. I watched that game. It was terrible. And this is what I've said. This was the only primetime game they've been in, and I do not trust Baker Mayfield primetime at all to do anything good for you betting-wise. I don't. Then they bounce back, have a great game against the Saints. I partially blame this on the offense for the Saints. The Saints just have been anemic on offense until that Jacksonville game. Well, to be fair, until the second half of that Jacksonville game. Then they get absolutely crushed. They get trounced by the Buccaneers, or by the Lions. What the hell am I talking about? The Lions, 20 to 6. And then they lose by three points to probably, I mean, probably the third best team in that division, the Falcons. Um, I guess, and I would put the Saints ahead of, um, on paper at least, uh, ahead of the Falcons. But the Falcons are playing some great ball, you know, so hats off to them. But. This is a game that probably everybody was leaning on the Buccaneers uh, to win. That's why that point spread was at three and a half. So, um, so they come here and they they literally the Fal- the Falcons defense holds them to one touchdown. Okay, so I don't see where there's a, any possibility, injuries included, that the Buccaneers go in there. And cover this spread. I just don't see it. So uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing. You know, I'm not the most, I'm not the sharpest better in the world. But I am confident you could take the eight and a half if you're feeling frosty. Me personally, uh, you know, after what I saw on Sunday, I'm going to buy it down to seven. You know, I'll, 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 sho- I'll shove some extra money into the bet in order to make it profitable for a minus seven. I mean, it's not going to be that, it's going to, it's not going to be that big of a difference. So, so that's where I'm at. So that's where I'm at for the, for the Buccaneers. I don't trust Mayfield prime time and going up against the defense that is going to be looking for some redemption here and the offense as well. They weren't clicking that well in the first half of that Patriots game. And, you know, the Patriots defense play plays, especially at home, better than the Buccaneers defense does. So I think on all sides of the ball, the Bills bounce back, win this game easy. Everyone calms down in Buffalo. Everyone in Buffalo can, on the Buffalo team, they can relax and have a nice long week to prepare for the next game. So, all right, that does it for their for this, uh, this video. Thank you so much for sticking around for 32 minutes. Uh, please hit like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of all the topics that we covered here, who you're taking in the game tomorrow night. And uh, I will be back on Friday with a preview of the weekend games. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? Uh, let me drop this in here real quick. Um, I'm picking the Dim- Diamondbacks to win the World Series. I'm going with the underdog, and uh, yeah, so I'm not a huge baseball fan. I haven't really been following baseball, but I did catch a lot of the playoff games, and uh, yeah, everybody's been betting against them since the moment they entered the playoffs, so let's go Diamondbacks. All right, that's how I end the video. I'll catch you all on Friday.